Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira, and in this video I'm going to show you just a few of the highlights of the Construct 3 release 416. Let's dive in. Now, the big thing we've done for this release is we've created a whole new export option for Linux. Uh, this also runs on the Steam Deck, which is a big reason why we've uh, created this new export option. So previously you may have used NWJS for this, um, but this uh, is our own export technology based on the Chromium Embedded Framework or CEF. Um, and this makes it much more easy for us to support different platforms and uh, maintain them well. And we've uh, used this to uh, provide a really good option for publishing to the Steam Deck. If you choose this export option, you'll find that it's also got support for ARM architecture Linux systems. That includes the Raspberry Pi. So this is also a really good way to export something you can run from the desktop of a Raspberry Pi device. Uh, the main one you might want to use though is the uh, x64 or the 64-bit Intel-based architecture. And this runs on most modern Linux desktop systems and importantly the Steam Deck, which is a Linux-based uh, system as well, also using a 64-bit architecture. Here I've just recorded a video of myself running uh, this Kiwi Story uh, stock game um, in Construct on the Steam Deck. And you can see it runs very nicely. The gamepad input um, all works through the gamepad plugin and uh, performance is very nice. So this is a great way to get your games um, running on the Steam Deck and published to the Steam Deck and Steam OS. We've got lots of documentation about how this works. You can find the links in the video description. So this option also provides uh, Steam integration. Um, so you can do things like access uh, the um, Steam account number and name and uh, features such as checking if uh, DLC is available and um, make use of uh, various other Steam specific things like achievements. Um, this is the Steamworks plugin which you download separately from the add-on uh, system on our website which I'll also link to in the video description. Uh, if, you, if you've used this previously uh, be sure to download the latest version 1.2 which has support for uh, the Linux and the Steam Deck. Um, note this is different to the Greenworks plugin, that's the plugin specific to NWJS if you've used that before. Uh, note that Steamworks is a different plugin so you have to install and use that separately. This is all part of a wider plan of ours to move away from NWJS in the long term and provide our own in-house export options. We'll be working on macOS support throughout the next release cycle, so keep an eye out for that. Related to all that work, we've also now uh, made various improvements to the file system plugin in Construct. Previously, uh, this had good support for the Windows WebView 2 export option. Um, let me just open up this example. Um, so previously, you were able to use with WebView 2 um, on Windows um, built-in picker tags, which you can see also now autocomplete now. So this action allows file system to write a file uh, in this case named example.txt uh, directly to a known folder such as the desktop folder or the documents folder or, or, or the um, app data folder for um, uh, the app's own uh, data files. Uh, this is um, a great way to get the same kind of file system access that any other desktop app has so it can write without having to show a picker prompt uh, and without having to show a permission prompt it can just get read and write access to these known folders uh, straight away. Um, so in this case, I'm using the desktop folder and a file named example.txt. So basically, when I click the Save button, this will write the contents of the text input directly to the desktop. Um, this doesn't work in a browser because browsers don't have permission to read and write automatically without a picker dialog. That's a good thing for security because you don't want every web page you visit to be able to do that kind of thing. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, Windows export option supports this, but also the new Linux export option as well. So this is now uh, available with both. And as I mentioned, we're going to work on bringing that towards macOS uh, in the next release cycle as well. But just to demonstrate very quickly how this works, and remember this is, um, this is how it works on Linux as well, effectively. Uh, this is a Windows export I've done previously, um, so if I just run that, um, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Uh, I'll type in hello world, which is every programmer's favorite test string, and when I click save, the file will just appear without any picker dialog, without any permission prompt, straight on the desktop, and there's the text that I entered. 
Um, another addition we've made to the file system plugin is the uh, there's two new actions, run file and shell open. Shell open essentially does the same thing as if you double click it in um, the file explorer. So in this case, it will open notepad uh, with that file. Um, and if I just go back to construct here, I can show you these two actions in the file system object. There's uh, shell open and there's run file, um, which run file you can use to, for example, run a different executable and run it with different command line parameters. These uh, also were in the NWJS plugin before. We've brought them to file system. So this is one of the ways we're helping people move over to our new own export options. Moving on from that, whilst I'm talking about files, I'll mention a new action we've got in the system object, which is uh, with the save game system, previously load and save would save uh, to browser storage automatically. Now there's a new action, save to JSON. This is just to make it easy to save to a string, uh, which is not automatically saved anywhere permanently. And then you can save that uh, JSON data wherever you like. For example, uh, you could use the new file system plugin to save it directly into um, a folder on disk without needing any permission prompts. Um, so that is uh, a handy new way to be able to save uh, constructs, save game data wherever you like. Moving on, um, whilst we're also still talking about files and folders, uh, we've got a new improvement for folder-based projects. Um, here's a folder-based project I saved earlier with a project file in it named file.txt. Uh, a new feature we have is you can now choose auto reload all on preview um, for all these file-based folders such as files and fonts, videos, music, sounds, icons, screenshots. Um, this was previously only available for scripts. Uh, this is now available for all other kinds of files. Um, in the project bar. So now if I open in Windows Explorer, I can open where this text file is and uh, uh, edit it using an external app. This case um, is Notepad, but uh, of course that could be VS Code or your favorite image editor or whatever. And then as soon as I click preview, it updates from the file in the project folder and those changes will be immediately reflected in this preview. So that's another option to help make you make good use of folder-based projects. We've got some great new example projects in this release of Construct as well. There's uh, Eventide. This is a, a really fun one. Um, it was one of our bigger demo games, which our partners have developed for us. Uh, it's one of these sort of survival um, games where your character has to run around and try and survive and they'll automatically fire upon the various enemies that appear and uh, you can gain experience and get various upgrades. Um, it's a good one. I spent way too long playing this in the office the other week, so uh, have, a, have a look at that. It's great use of 3D effects as well. Uh, we've got more examples here which show off using audio worklets, which are a JavaScript feature to generate audio, um, excuse me, generate audio data, audio output programmatically, really efficiently. Uh, there's import maps, which is another JavaScript feature for um, using modules uh, more effectively, and web GPU compute, which allows you to run your own compute shaders on the GPU to uh, manipulate or generate data uh, with GPU acceleration, which is really cool technology. These are just a few examples to show just the incredible power of the modern web platform which can do really amazing things and we've now got examples to demonstrate how to cover those. There's some brilliant other examples here which you can find in this release uh, as ever just filter by the new tab, uh, the new category in the example browser and you can find them. There's loads more in this release which I haven't had time to cover in this video. Uh, there's plenty of improvements to things like the instances bar and flowcharts and loads more. So do have a look at uh, the release notes to get the full details. Um, we hope you enjoy using this uh, version of Construct and if you publish anything cool to the Steam Deck, let us know because we'd love to see what you've made with it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>